Epson. So we still have 7-2. We are still learning by matrices. I'm just continuing that section. So again, we have done addition, addition, subtraction, multiplication, and we are actually moving forward towards division. So we have done determinant already. And as you, as I told you guys before, determinant is a step towards division. So let's talk about few more concepts that would lead you towards division. Okay, so uh, let's try understanding another concept about division. When I say divide, so basically what we do is, let's say we have some number A, if I say divide by 8, let's just say 8, you could write it like this, or you could even say A times 1 8, which is the same thing, or it could also be written as if you look at closely, basically it's the same thing, but written three different ways. Here's I literally divided by that number. Here's I multiply by the reciprocal. Here's I just put the number with negative exponent. I hope you remember if it's negative exponent, basically it's just the same thing. Like you just have to take it to the opposite side. But okay, now here, this is what happens with matrices. We don't divide by any matrix. So this cannot be one of the way we would be using. We don't multiply by the reciprocal either. So the only way we're going to be following for division, it's going to be this. So basically, you just have to put over one, which is called inverse of that matrix. So we're going to be following inverse. So how do we do that? That's what I'm going to show you today. So just like determinant, we have 2 by 2 does a different process and 3 by 3 is a different process. So today's lesson is mainly focused on 2 by 2 matrices. How to find inverse of 2 by 2 matrices. So how to find inverse of 2 by 2 matrices. Okay. That was one of the things. One more thing you need to understand. And again, if you want to follow along, you can just look at the notes. I'm on second page of that packet I sent you. So when I say division, there's another thing you need to understand. So just think about this. If this is my original number, and if I multiply by its reciprocal or the inverse, isn't it that's how it's going to look like? This or... Is the same thing, right? What happens if you multiply a number by its reciprocal or its inverse? 8 times 1, 8. What would be my answer? So my answer would be 1. Here you go. So basically what's going to happen is if you multiply your original matrix by its inverse matrix, so your answer is going to be 1. But I hope you remember from the first lesson when we started learning about matrices, I said there's no way you can write 1 in matrix. There has to be identity matrix, which would look. So your matrix, which is same as 1, it would look something like this. If it's 2 by 2 matrix, then your answer would be this. If it's 3 by 3 matrix, then your answer would look something like here you go. So that's the idea. So let's say we are done with inverse. So let's say at the end, if I multiply my inverse matrix by my original matrix, so my answer always should have something like this. You could do that just to verify that. You could always do that. Yeah. So let me show you a few concepts here. So let's start off with actual inverse process here. How do we find inverse? Okay. For finding inverse, which is, this is the symbol for inverse. So what we do is, don't forget, we're doing two by twos today. So today we're just finding inverse of two by twos. So inverse of two by two. So first thing you got to do is it's one over determinant. And then we multiply this by a joint matrix. Oops, my bad. So times it by a joint matrix. So you'll see this equation on third page of your note. Okay, so I guess you already know de what determinant means, right? We already know how to figure that out. How do we find a joint matrix? So let me show you that. So let's just talk about that first. How do we find a joint matrix? Basically, this is the first equation on the top of third page where you see 
1 over A, D minus B, C. And whatever the, bra uh, the matrix you see next to that, it's nothing else. That's called a joint, all right? Gosh, why am I putting like that? Uh, okay, so it's nothing else. It's just a joint matrix. Okay, how do we find a joint? Let's talk about that. A joint, you have to do two different steps. So let's say if this is my original matrix, A, B, C, and D. So in order to find a joint of this, again, I do that. Okay, a joint, you have to do two different steps. For A and D, we swap. We swap those two. So now for the edge joint matrix, D would go here and A would go here. For the other diagonal, which is this one here, we just switch signs. So we switch, we switch signs. So this would become negative B and this is negative C. Here you go. So that's how we figure out a joint. So once you have this a joint matrix, just times it by one over determinant. That's how we find inverse of two by two. So now let me show you an example. Again, if you don't understand any of these steps, so please pause the video and you can go back and then replay that part. So let's look at my first example. So I have four, seven, two, six this is my original matrix and i'm trying to find inverse of this and first thing you have to have is let me just write that down so in order to find inverse you have to have one over determinant and then a joint matrix so let's just figure out determinant first i hope you remember two by two we just take the diagonals so i'm just going to label this as and okay, determinant of this matrix A is so 4 times 6, 24 minus 2, 7, 14. So determinant is 10. All right, so I'm done with this part here. Let's figure out a joint. So let's just say a joint matrix would be okay. You need to swap these two. This becomes 6 and 4 and switch signs for the other diagonal. So it's negative 7 and negative 2. Now once you have these two things, all pretty much now you all have all you have to do is just putting these two together. So A inverse is 1 over determinant, which is 10. And it joint is 6 minus negative 7, negative 2, and 4. And at the end, pretty much you just have to multiply these together. Now keep in mind. It's a number getting multiplied by a matrix. It's not matrix multiplication. It's scalar multiplication. If you multiply a matrix by a number, it's literally multiplying every single number by the constant outside. So 6 times 1 tenth would become 6 tenths. 7 times 1 tenth, negative 7 tenths, negative 2 tenths, and 4 tenths. And that's my inverse. Here you go. Now, I, this is all I have, but like I still want you to understand if this uh, process actually works or not. I really want you to see that. So let me show you how to verify if this is my inverse or not. And remember, in order to verify, what you could do is if you multiply your original by its inverse, your answer has to be identity matrix. Let's check if that happens with this or not. So my original matrix was, it was, uh, hold on, where is that? It's, uh, where did I put my original one? Oh yeah, it's here. 4726. So original is 4726. If I multiply this by its inverse matrix, which is 6 tenths, negative 7 tenths, negative 2 tenths, 4 tenths. Let's check if actually if this is actually inverse or not. Okay. Now, since this is 2 by 2, this is 2 by 2, inside numbers work. Yep. So it means I can find the product. Outside would be your answer. So my answer matrix would be 2 by 2. Hey guys, to keep in mind, I'm showing you this process just to give you better understanding like this process actually works. You don't have to do it. But just to give you better understanding, that's why I'm doing this, okay? All right, so 2 by 2 means you would have two numbers, two rows, two columns. So first, I would take this row, I would multiply by this column. 4 times 6, so that would be 24 tenths. 7 times negative 2 tenths, that would be negative 14 tenths. If I simplify, that would be 10 tenths, which is 10 over 10, which is 
one. Here you go. All right. Now let's move on to this one here. I have one and two. So first row, second column. Four times negative seven tenths would be negative 28 tenths. Seven times positive four tenths is positive 28 tenths, which would be zero if you add. Okay. Let me erase this whole. Okay. Now back to this. Now if I have two ones, so it means I would take second row times it by first column. Two times six tenths would be, let me erase this. Two times uh, six tenths would be 12 tenths. And six times negative two tenths is negative 12 tenths, which eventually going to be zero. All right. Now two six times it by second column here. So two times seven tenths, it's negative 14 tenths. Six times four tenths, it's positive 24 tenths, which simplify to 10 tenths, which is simplify one. Here you go. So if I simplify the entire thing, my answer is this. So it means this matrix is actually the inverse of this original matrix. Again, you don't have to check all the time. I showed you just to show you that like this process actually works. So yeah, this is pretty much all. So thank you for watching. Stay